Hello, 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 folks. I'm Philip Magnus here with a review of Mark Lawrence's fantastic Grey Sister. If you're up for that kind of review and more, why don't you subscribe? Now, let's jump into it, shall we? How I've longed to return to Nana's story in the year and several months since I read Red Sister. Time and opportunity conspired against me. Until this summer, when I read through the second book of the Ancestor in two sittings. A return to the sweet Mercy Monastery was most welcome. Following a time skip, I was happy to be reunited with Nona and company. Things were both the way I remembered and different. Nona's breezy temperament and cheery attitude have not changed in the least, except for the voice in her head of a devil made of violence and darkest desires. Forced to carry within herself the devil Kiot, Nona has to come to grips with her darker urges. She is either to embrace self-control or risk becoming no different than some of the foes she faced down in the previous novel. Yet Kiot is not all bad, I sight. She'd come to think of him as a broken thing. Part of her mind, perhaps, filled with fragments of knowledge, occasionally useful as the shards of a pot can be, offering a sharp edge, but no good for holding soup, close quotes. All of this is to say you can find use for and even grow fond of even the darker aspects that linger within yourself, and there are moments where parasite and host bonded in intricate and unwholesome ways. The demon makes a valuable addition to the mammoth cast of supporting characters none of her friends threatens, crushes, or otherwise engages with. That's a lie. It's only ever one of the first three. Zol, the four-blooded chosen one, steals the spotlight repeatedly, both by exhibiting frightening competencies and by slowly revealing layers of herself hidden behind a mask of stoicism. Sister Kettle and Ara and Dala don't make it easy for Zol, mind, always the deadly sister of discretion. Kettle goes to every length to help a sister in need. Ara and Dala, meanwhile, not only the best friends our girl Nona could hope for, they're also great at a party. Even a certain traitorous cur from Red Sister makes a most memorable appearance. Abba's glass made for an excellent secondary point of view character. I might be wrong when I write this, but I have a lingering suspicion her chapters in this book made a much larger chunk of Grey Sister than they did the previous book. Of all the older generation of skilled martial artists and deadly prisoners Lawrence has introduced in this prayer of nuns, or however you'd call a group of them, it might just be the abbess I am fondest of. Glass plays the most elaborate political games, just as she did in the previous novel, her machinations far-reaching and promising deadly consequences. It's all sharp falls, an epochal leaps in the deadly arena of political religious games with glass, and I wouldn't change this fierce lady for anything or anyone. I quote, She's so old, she must be fifty! Close quotes, a young nonna Grey exclaimed at one point, to the bemusement of everyone over twenty. Set pieces, ambitious battles, monsters beneath the deepest rocks, endless barbs across monastery and royal court alike, and come rather to warm your heart. Grey Sister has much I loved, and much worth celebrating. Little surprise there, in my experience, Mark Lawrence delivers page turners without stop. On a side note, this has been the most inconsistent I've been with how I approach a series in forever. I read Red Sister on my Kindle, grabbed a trade paperback of Grey Sister, and I've had an audiobook of Holy Sister sitting around forever now so I'm very likely to finish the series with that one. Long live diversity in material conditions. Whatever that means. I'm Philip Magnus. If you enjoyed this video, why not share it with your friends? Make sure to press that subscribe button and uh, smash the like button as well. Have you read anything by Lawrence? I believe I've had a good few novels now on the channel. It's been two, hasn't it? Maybe three. Eh, one or the other. 
but it's a it's a great book that is written by Mark Lawrence. Usually, that's the case, and uh, I probably should sit down and write my review of the book that wouldn't burn. I read that one a, several months ago now, around its release, and kind of got distracted by my master's thesis, but might be a good time to return to it and share the word, the good word on it. I'll see you again next time. Bye!